is create a robot that ran back and forth along a track and caught a ball, as well as throw it back to the, uh, to the user. We do this using a camera mounted on the top of our design, and it, uh, we use a software called LabVIEW and RoboRealm that'll connect everything together. Basically, the original thought was, we just take the screen, we split it in half, compare the X value with the center of the screen, and if it's on this side, move reverse, and on this side, move forward. Uh, we just call um, moving toward that wall forward, this wall being reverse, just for uh, design. The hopper is made out of PVC, or plexiglass, I'm sorry. So you can see the ball being dropped down in. When it catches the ball, you'll see it sitting there. Uh, when it releases the ball, it also helps for diagnosis purposes. If the ball gets jammed in there a little bit, we'll be able to see where and why, and just, just help for demonstration purposes, really, is why it's made out of plexiglass. Just earlier, uh, Jake, sorry, uh, are wired so that they cannot be energized at the same time. So when it's going forward, it will go forward until there's a signal that says, okay, I need to go reverse, and it goes reverse. It switches off the forward and goes reverse. Um, we, have li we have limit switches, uh, one in the center to determine when the ball is in the center. Right. So John is in a safe place. <laughs> the cart does not see a ball right now. I have them hidden in my pockets, therefore it's not moving. Pull it out, it goes right. Find that pixel window, it stops. And then on the other side of the pixel window, it goes left. We'll also show you the cases. It's our LabVIEW program stores. Uh, I said, if I uh, throw a higher low, programming all right. the camera. Okay. <laughs> Bumper, and when it tries to return home, if we had that sensor actually in the home, it would overshoot to the other end of the track because it's so fast by the time it actually stopped. So what this four feet, four foot piece of wood in here does, it now sees home initially as there and slows down. And it brings it to here. Oh, it's kind of a large hospital. There's lots of different hallways. There's travel time adds up to about an hour per trip, and there's six pharmacy techs um, that take six trips per day, so it's six hours per day. It's just spent on solely on logistics and, and pharmacy. Um, and they have to be with just the box. Um, easy to use user interface, we use that with the ID12, the badge scanner up in the upper right hand corner there. What that is, is it just scans a card, lets us know who it is. If we allowed them access, they could get into the box. Um, and in order to get into the box, then what happens is an activate unlock is sent to a transistor, but there's a push button that has to be pressed first. And when you press the push button, the box opens. Now, if you wait too long, the box will relock, the activate unlock shuts down. Um, once the box is open, then the RFID Okay, so once the box is open, we want to be able to put things into or take things out of it. And that requires us to be able to track what's going into or out of the box. So we need to be able to identify things that are moving inside or out of the box. So for example, we could take a syringe. Just display a couple yeah. while we're waiting. Okay. So pretty much how it works is I swipe the badge. See, it reads my name there, box unlocked. I press the button, it's not working that great right now, so I just open it itself. And then next thing Oops. should say box open. And then we put an item in, for example, Jake's watch. We put it in, Jake's watch added. It keeps telling us it's uploaded. And now if I close the box, it'll say box closed, box content, Jake's watch. I can open it back up, swipe my badge again, open it, there we go, box open, I can take my wallet which has a RFID tag on it, there's my wallets added, and close it again, box content, Jake's watch in my wallet, 